Welcome to another edition of Cam Instructor's Mastercam Tips. This video is taken from our new 2D high-speed milling course and is part 5 of 5 in the dynamic milling section. This video will look at the entry motion settings. Dynamic milling, part 5. The previous video finished off looking at the step over and minimum toolpath radius settings. In this video, we will finish up the dynamic milling toolpath settings overview by looking at the entry motion options. Open the entry motion page for OP27. This page contains several areas for defining the entry motion. At the top, we can select the entry method. Choices here include helix only, helix followed by full medial burial, helix followed by trochodial medial, profile, medial, and custom. Use entry chain. Below this pull down is where the chain geometry can be selected. Continuing down, here there are options for helix radius, trochodial loop radius, additional slot width, and center helix on point. Depending on which entry method is specified, these fields may or may not be available. Below this, we have settings for the Z clearance, which specifies how far above the stock the entry motion begins, and plunge angle, as well as entry pitch. Only one of these can be used as they both control the rate of descent of the entry motion. Lastly is the optional field for entry feeds and speeds. When enabled, the entry motion will use these values as the speed and feed instead of the programmed operation speeds. Select OP27 and examine the toolpath in the graphics area. A slightly different part is used for the toolpaths in this group, which can be found on level 2. OP27 starts the toolpath by helixing to the cut depth. The radius of this helix can be controlled by the helix radius setting, and the Z cut depth per revolution is controlled by either the plunge angle or entry pitch. OP28 is set to use helix followed by full medial, so again, this entry will helix down to the cutting depth, but once at cut depth, the toolpath will make a full depth and width cut along a medial path. A medial path is basically a central spine of the pocket selected for machining. The purpose of this medial cut is so that the subsequent passes are not fully buried. Burying the tool at any point during the cut might not be acceptable. This is where the next entry method comes in. OP29 is set to helical entry followed by trochodial medial. This is similar to the previous entry, except the medial path now employs a trochodial motion to avoid full cut or width of the cut. With this entry method selected, an additional field becomes available. The trochodial loop radius can be specified. This controls the loop sizes used in the trochodial medial cut. This toolpath will take longer to run than the burial method. The profile entry method is shown in OP30. This entry will create its own boundary to cut based on the shape of the pocket and the size of the cutter. Z cut depth per profile revolution is still controlled by either plunge angle or entry pitch settings. The last entry method, custom use entry chain, we demonstrated its use in the chaining portion of these videos. Refer back to those videos for explanation of its use. The remaining two toolpaths show the difference between the plunge angle and entry pitch settings. Essentially, they affect the path in the same way. You are just controlling the pitch with different values. By directly entering the entry pitch, you are giving Mastercam a depth value to not exceed during one revolution of the entry motion. Plunge angle will plunge at the specified angle until one revolution of the entry motion occurs. There is no limit to the total depth this will result in. The last group of settings on the entry motion page, entry feeds and speed, are fairly self-explanatory. You can specify a different speed and feed for the entry. Be aware though that these speeds and feeds are active for the entire entry motion. For example, when performing a helix followed by full medial, 
the entry feeds and speeds will be active for both the helical portion and the full medial cut portion. This completes the dynamic milling toolpath overview. In the next video, we will explore the area mill toolpath.